to get my materials up here. And just out of curiosity, um, how many of us on here are currently using a coach? Anybody? Did anybody use a coach in the past three years? I have. Who's that? Frank? Uh, yeah. I used uh, Mike Minervini for a little while. Okay. Uh, I know there's several uh, Brower, uh, excuse me, Florida agents uh, in Broward are using coaches, and we have a few in Palm Beach. And Colleen, why do you think people hire coaches? What do you think the main reason is? To keep them on track, to uh, keep them moving forward for uh, support. Um, also, uh, for the accountability. You know, it makes you uh, function better when you uh, have to be accountable. It's just human nature. So, um, accountability. Um, I just want to hear what were they, if you could repeat those accountability. Uh, accountability, um, so let's say stimulation to stimulate you, um, to keep you on track, to uh, encourage you, of course, encouragement is a good one, um, to encourage you to move forward and grow, uh, to have somebody to discuss uh, their plans with, um, to follow their uh, business plan, to even have a business plan. Pretty, pretty good so far. I think too, you could add, um, also add structure and systems in, um, if you're, if you need somebody to kind of guide you along on, especially systems, you want to put stuff in place. Time management, Frank. <laughs> yes, time management. Uh, Rob? Yes. This is Marco. Uh, has one of those Broward um, people that, that uses a, a coach. Um, for me, it, it one of the main, there were two main reasons why I decided to hire a coach. One was to put systems in place, including um, time management. Um, I learned a lot about um, setting up systems in place to try to automate a lot of the non-income generating activities of my day. Um, and also um, to learn things that would be very hard for an individual person to research and to put together on my own, um, such as marketing um, and uh what is going on out there to get a, a more complete picture of what's going on in the uh, marketplace and what to expect and how to prepare myself for upcoming changes. And um, I like the word that you use, non-income producing activities, right? Um, I think coaches also create an awareness of those activities and what they are, correct? Ab absolutely. Um, what I, one thing that, that I learned from Tom Ferry and my coach is that you have to figure out how much you want to make per year. And once you do that, you have to divide that. Uh, you have to subtract the time off that you want to take during the year um and then divide the remaining weeks you have left work by how many hours you you want to work per week and that should be the value of one hour of your time so if you want to um earn let's say half a million dollars a year uh you'll figure out that your um hourly rate of pay to yourself is something like $500 an hour. Um, and if you are using an hour of your time um, to do, for instance, um, entering 
or, or like a tracking sheet, for instance, for the office, and that takes you 20 minutes. Well, you're, you just you just paid yourself about you know $150 to prepare a tracking sheet when you can um, hire an, a, a virtual assistant um, for less than $10 an hour to do the same work for you. Now, of course, getting that person trained to do that work is going to um, cost you money of your own time to get them trained. But then you can also put in place um, systems to get your people trained with uh, a minimum amount of your own time being spent doing that. And that's where something like Trainual comes into place, which is a system that I use where I can um, set up lessons. And if I lose an assistant and I have to get another one or a new buyer's agent, um, I don't necessarily spend so much of my own time training them. Um, and that way I can focus on things that only I can do that are those income generating activities. And uh, how long how long have you had the train you all? Um, one year. Rob? Yes. Um, one of one of the um, I think key reasons to have a coach is to help an agent stay focused. Agents have a hard time staying focused on what has to be done, um, and I think that mentoring and staying focused is key. But here's another thing: you can coach up the wazoo, give them the tools, train them, you know, but it's up to them to actually do the work. So um, it reminds me, it's a, a great um, observation. And one of the things that it does, Maria, it reminds me that, um, that there's a, uh, a joke which says, how many psychiatrists does it, to change, does it take to change a light bulb? Does anybody know the answer to that? Mm-mm. It only takes one, but the light bulb has to want to change. So the, 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 the meaning behind that is, is that you, know, you have to want to be coached. Like you can't, yeah. you can't reluctantly go into coaching because you have to embrace it. And if you resist it, it won't be effective. Uh, it's basically a nuisance. And sometimes what I see is people hire coaches and they don't immerse themselves in the process and they feel like they're obligated just to show up and get something done beforehand. And I think that that's, you know, the, the entry level of success for coaching is, hey, I just need to do the assignment so I can go to Coach Ron and tell him I did this and here's the result I got, as opposed to immersing themselves in the content to change the way that they're doing their business, right? And another thing while you were talking, Maria, that, that came to my mind was, um, I think we assume like a real estate um, professional is basically a salesperson. But I really think what we've evolved to is business owners. Mm -hmm. right? Because there's a lot of different ways, a lot of different paths that we could choose to run our business. So we need to put on our CEO cap instead of our salesperson's cap when we look at how we make decisions in our business and our practice. Right. Um, and, and going back to the doctors, I'm going to say one other thing that I'm going to get off of it. I think a lot of doctors are great at medicine, but some of them aren't as successful as they could be because they don't transition from medicine into being in the business of medicine. Right. You know, you could be a great surgeon, but you also have to run your practice profitably. Right. Or you can't service as many people as you otherwise could. And that's gonna limit the impact that you have on the community. Um, so Maria, you brought those two kind of thoughts out to my head is like, you, know, you can't call somebody and say, hey, I wanna put you on coaching if they don't wanna be coached. No. And, um, and then, you know, we have to change the definition of who we are. Um, you know, are we a real estate professional? Are we a team leader? Are we a salesperson? 
or are we the CEO of our business, right? Because even within sales, real estate sales is unique in that, you know, you don't get a salary. You basically get compensated for results. To me, that's an entrepreneurial spirit, right? And yeah, we're all here to support you in, in achieving those goals. <laughs> let, me, let me let me go back to my uh, my little note sheet here. Do you want to be host, Rob? Hold on. I, think I am, no? Oh, okay, you are? Okay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I am. <clears throat> so why is coaching successful? Um, and this is kind of in that little handout I gave on the should have been a clickable attachment. Um, coaching basically is professional development and learning, simple, simply put, right? Nothing more, nothing less. Um, and coaching doesn't mean like you're deficient in what you're doing. It just means that you want to improve. Um, coaching, you know, if you um, get the, the chemistry and the dynamic right, um, changes the beliefs that you have in the business. And when you change the beliefs, it changes your confidence. Um, you know, oftentimes coaches have a, a resume of accomplishing things. Sometimes they, they just have a resume of being a teacher. Um, you all agree, if you have a good coach, it builds your confidence, right? It puts you in a emotionally in a better place. I'm going to talk with Marco since you have one, right? Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Um, oftentimes, a coach is someone that will force you to face things sooner than you would otherwise um, when something isn't working, when you have to let someone go, when, um, you, you know, uh, when you have to make a change to your business that you don't particularly want. Um, a coach is someone who will unemotionally bring that up and make you hopefully save a lot of time and aggravation by making change earlier rather than later. And and uh, I think one of the, the important things about a true coach is, you know, do you believe that if you have a good coaching relationship, Marco, that they care more about your success than just their paycheck? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, by the definition, someone to be a real estate coach has to be a very good business person and um, savvy with money and, and his own income. Um, but that doesn't preclude them from caring about you. And the relationship that I have with my coach now is... Um, very different than it was when I started coaching with him. And um, a, a lot of times he just knows what I'm going to say before I even say it. He, sometimes he knows what I'm going to think before I even think it. Um, so absolutely, it does take time to develop it. It's just like any other relationship. Um, it, it, it takes a little bit of time. So I, I I'm so I, I and, 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 and Marco, um, would you say that um, if you have better confidence, you're more, you know, if the coach instills confidence because you put them on a pedestal of having the skill set or the expertise to guide you, does that um, drive more consistency? Absolutely, because I don't feel like I'm guessing what I should be doing. I feel that I know what should be doing and I have uh, a plan that's laid out in front of me um, on several steps. And when someone tells you and let, you know, try to do this between now and our next call and we'll talk more about how that worked out for you, that's basically a nice way of saying, I'm gonna be on your ass. Um, you know, if, if if you don't do what you just agreed, you should be doing. So absolutely. I think a coach um, is a person that understands 
uh, your needs and is invested in seeing your success because that's what a coach is. I mean, they're they're in business to see people um, be successful and help them grow. Uh, in you know, speaking as a coach, <laughs> uh, there's a lot more to it than money. You're absolutely right. I mean, my greatest joy is to see an agent succeed and know that I've done something. I share in that uh, enthusiasm. It's like an adrenaline rush. It's like you, Rob. You're you're basically our overall coach. <laughs> Can I uh, interject something? Thank you. Sure. Okay. Well, uh, uh, my classes are tw uh, twice a week, and they're growing as, as <laughs> the weeks go on. And it's uh, things that I teach are things that made me successful in my business throughout my 38, 39 years of doing it. So um, I adapt a lot of the stuff that I've learned from different coaches, to Mike Ferries, Tom Ferries, Brian Buffini's. Lloyd Wickman's. I took I take all that stuff that I've learned from those those coaches and I made it my own because no coach can teach someone their style of selling or their style of of being a uh, successful realtor. They have to want it. They have to change it, make it adapted to their own style, <clears throat> but actually just do it. You know, that's what that's what I and, and I tell the agents when they when they attend my class, I says, you're going to hear me say things over and over again, because it's all basically the basic stuff. But I said, if you get one or two things out of what I say that reminds you what you need to do to improve your business, that's where you're going to grow and make, make money and be more successful. And I can say, oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Yes. Uh, you oh. have always been successful, Ron. And uh, and he's invested. He feels the same way I do, because uh, we talk about it. Um, and seeing the agents uh, follow through and be successful. And you know, Colleen, it's interesting. Um, I, I, somebody was saying something, and uh, I want to let them finish their thought before I go to mine. Okay, maybe Rob, can you hear me? We can. Yes. Hi, can you guys hear me? It's Marilyn. Marilyn. Yes, Marilyn. Okay, great, because um, my internet's going up and down. I'm upstairs. So I just wanted to, first of all, say hi to everyone. Um, I, I've had a coach, and I am a coach. So what I'd like to say about that is I didn't think I needed a coach because I thought, I'm a coach. Why do I need one? But I'll tell you this. When I had my coach, I was a team leader, and um, it was the accountability every week and that was one of my best years in recruiting i didn't think i needed them but every week when i knew i had that phone call i made sure that i did everything i was supposed to do and i think the biggest part and then i've coached many agents um and it's the same thing because they knew when they were having that phone call with me whatever they were supposed to do they would do so I think the best part of coaching, um, and I don't think it's just for new people, it's for seasoned agents, it's for everyone. Um, it's the accountability. And it's like, you're not going to school without your homework. So you make sure you do things. And that's what I got out of coaching. And, and Marilyn, on, on, these, on these calls, you know, there are people that are new, but there are people doing chairman's level, diamond level, um, making over a million dollars in commission that are coming on these calls and listening, and we don't pay them to do that. So there must be some implicit value that they're deriving from it. And um, you know, it's not enough to know what to do. It really needs to be second nature. It needs to be something that, um, that you basically immerse yourself in. How many of us know things that we should do, but we don't do them, right? To Ron's point of when he keeps saying it, um, it's not that we're losing our mind, it's we're trying to get that message across. I think human nature requires you to hear it something like seven to 10 times before it really even resonates with you, right? Before you can repeat it. So sometimes you're sitting there and say, Ron, you told me that two weeks ago and I heard you that the first day we did class. Well, guess what? You're going to hear it another seven times until it becomes second nature, right? 
because that's what really develops who we are is um, the way that we think. Okay. Um, and, you know, once you have somebody that you know cares, who is giving you good advice, you know, let's break that, you know, whether it's uh, Marco saying, let's break down the activities, figure out what can we outsource for less than what we're paying, less than what we want to pay ourselves, then that's really called leverage. Once you have that confidence, then you can also speak um, to your tribe, your, your clients, you know, your audience, if it's on social, however, you're getting the message out there with a, a much higher level of trusting and a higher level of communication. Um, let me just mute everybody for a sec. You know, it, remember her name, she signed above her name. Now, I there we go. Somebody's doing business. It's a good thing. Rob, if I could just ask a question of Ron for a second, without getting ahead of ourselves here, but you brought up a point about how you learned certain things from Mike Ferry and certain things from Tom Ferry and certain things from Brian Buffini. Do you think that it's important for an agent who is coaching with a specific coach to, after a period of time, move on to a different coach? Well, I mean, I don't know how much more you can, you know, you can expand your, your education by um, going from coach to coach to coach. I mean, uh, I took everything in. It's, you know, real estate, it's just basic stuff. It's just, you know, it's time management, it's scheduling, you know, it's it's performing which, uh, and doing what you say you're going to do. Um, and that's why I think this RAMP program, which I have a bunch of agents I'm meeting with today for the first time, um, follow a system, okay? It's all systems. That's what I've learned. That's the basic, what I've learned from, from my ferry. You learn a system, you follow your schedules, you follow what your goals are going to be, and success comes down the road. I mean, I, I mean, I, I was nothing. I didn't, you know, when I started out in this business, I didn't make any money until I went out and, <laughs> and invested in coaches. I invested in Mike Ferry and went to everywhere in the United States to, to hear his seminars for two, three days. And then I took everything I learned from him, everything I learned from Floyd Wickman, everything I learned from Buffini. And then I, you know, everybody has a little different style, but you take you take in the basic things and you spread it out to the agents and let them do what, what they feel more comfortable doing. I tell them, you don't have to do it exactly like I do it. Make it your own. So by going from coach to coach to coach, uh, is it's not a bad thing, but I would probably say the basic, the basic things you're going to hear from every coach that you, that you uh, listen to is going to the basics, knocking on doors, cold calling, sticking with your schedule, sticking with your goals, and look at them every day. Pin them up on your mirror in your bathroom. You know, put them on post-its, whatever you need to do to remind yourself what you need to do because it's your business. So once you do that, you have success. Simple as that. So, so and, and I think, Ron, you know, one of the things with coaching is you need to be a good student and communicate maybe some of the things that you feel are missing. So you, you don't necessarily need to switch coaches, but maybe you could have an honest communication with your coach. Say, hey, you know what, Ron, you know, um, I really feel I need some improvement over here as opposed to over there. Right. And um, I think most times you're going to find that a coach will will be able to pivot and respond to those um, questions and, and those uh, observations. And it's like if you go to a doctor and you don't say what's you know, what's hurting, you say you, you try to figure it out. Why is my business broke? I'm not going to tell you how I feel. They can't they can't diagnose and solve the problem without all the all the facts. Right. And everybody operates differently. Everybody is a different person. Everybody's going to have a different formula for success. But I think the principles are the same. And you need to figure out how you pivot from those principles to get to the outcome that you want. Um, I'm going to go a little bit off my, uh, this is a great dialogue. But one of the things as far as mentoring and coaching is I think we need to embrace having conversation that we might think are uncomfortable today because that's what we do and if we think they're uncomfortable um, how are we going to engage in them how often are we going to have those conversations 
okay? We need to um, embrace the difficult because that's what makes us better, right? Nobody, at least nobody that I've seen, Ron or Robert or, or, uh, any, or Colleen, nobody ever gets better doing the stuff that they're already good at, do they? And no. that's one of the, and Rob, one of the things that agents need to really think about before even thinking about coaching, do I really want to change my mindset and go outside of my comfort level to do what has to be done? Because if you can honestly answer that question, then coaching, no matter how much you pay, no matter who you're coaching with, will not work. So you have to do this inside introspection, say, hey, Maria, do you really want to do this? Put all a thousand percent into it and get out of your comfort level to do what it, is, it takes to succeed. If it's yes, then coaching will help. If you're ambiguous about it, it won't, no matter how much you pay and no matter who you go with. I don't if know if not, anyone agrees with that, but oh, uh, absolutely. I, if you're not if you're not fully invested in yourself <clears throat> and growing your success, uh, coaching is not going to be the way to go for you. It just, you have to want it. <clears throat> you have to want to participate. It's a symbiotic <laughs> relationship. Uh, the coach has to feel that need from you to grow so that they can help to build your enthusiasm, your energy, uh, keep you on track. It's a sharing. You, ha you have to share with the coach what you're looking for, what your needs are, and what your weaknesses are. Yep. And um, I, I, think, I think most of us got into real I'm, and I don't want to like pull the group but I think most of us got into real estate because you know we are intrigued by the concept of real estate or we like helping people and money was part of it but I don't think when you we enroll in real estate school most people think they're going to make a million dollars their first year a lot of times people are telling you that you know in five years 85 percent or 95 percent of the class will be out of the business so most people go there for more emotional reasons or because they like to help people reasons. And those reasons need to be um, reconciled with the business principles so that you can be sustainable. It's like a doctor that likes to save lives. If he doesn't have a good staff around him or if he doesn't have a good administration, he won't be in business to save lives. So, um, you know, what we love to do needs to be supported by what we need to do. Um, we love to help people in many cases, but we don't like the cold call. We don't like to have sales calls where people might reject us, right? Um, Marilyn, you find agents when you coach them, they, they don't like rejection? Yeah, I mean, you miss them. yeah, yeah. They, you know, they, I, what I really find, the biggest thing I find is that they, um, they don't follow through on a lot of things that they should be following through. And it is, well, a lot of it is they are afraid of rejection. And I tell them that, well, if you step out, you have to step out of your comfort zone, step out of the box, face it, and then and then it just gets easier. And once I get them to that point, they go out there, they do knock on doors, they go out, they do everything that they have to do. And then they'll come back the next week and their adrenaline's so high. You know, because it worked, it worked. So you got to get, get past the rejection and just follow through on what you're supposed to do. So if you if you knew, Marilyn, that people weren't going to reject you, would it be easier to, to do the things that, that you're afraid of? You're afraid of? Um, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I guess it would be. I guess it would be. I guess fear is the biggest part. You know, for it, them, um, the, the, the uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but but what happens with us and my son is fairly new in the business, is his second year, and he's on the phones almost every day. And he has two hours a day prospecting. And at first, when you first start, 
of course, you don't want to do it, but you start calling and you start talking to people, have conversations. But Rob said, that's the magic word, conversations. The more conversations you have with people, the more money you're going to make and the better your business is going to grow. But, but basically, when he starts calling, he's on a roll. So if they say, no, no problem, next, he's on a roll. No problem, no, okay. And then till he gets a yes, he goes, whoa, really? That's how we were getting our listings. We just picked up a 1.250 uh, uh, listing from just cold calling. Okay, the guy, we, we talked to him about two months ago. We stayed in touch with him. He's in our lead bank and we stayed in touch with him. He called us back and says, I'm ready to go. Come on over. We listed his house for 1.2, uh, 1.25. So it's just a matter of, it's a numbers game. The more you do it, the easier it gets. You just got to do it. And, and um, I want you to remember that, you know, the attitude and the way that you communicate um, derives a lot of those results, Ron. And uh, I don't know, Zach, are you able to unmute yourself for a moment? Zach yeah. so? Yeah, I'm right here. Oh. Uh, can you hear me? I got a little bad service where I'm at. No worries. But um, what was your impression before going out and talking to people in, in the neighborhood when we went door knocking? Did you think that certain people would be annoyed that you knocked on their door on a Monday afternoon? Are you talking to me? No, I'm talking Zach Durso. Oh. Yeah, no, I definitely thought, you know, we were going to get the door slammed in our face a lot, told off. Um, and it, yeah, it was just the complete opposite. I was, I was shocked. But do you think with a different approach, your, your uh, expectation would have been a reality? Yeah, definitely. You know, like sometimes you could be your own worst enemy when, uh, you know, you have these preconceived notions and you kind of make the worst possible thing happen to you. But, you know, seeing you do it and kind of flip these people around, it, you know, it's a great thing. So, um, you know, Zach and I, we, we uh, door knocked an area earlier this week for about two hours. And this is not uncommon. Every single person, even if they didn't have a need, they were engaging and friendly. And um, and it goes back towards the way that we communicate with them and the message that we have. And I hope that, you know, you know go, moving off of that experience, you know, your fear level is, is, is down and that you're more comfortable to continue doing that on a consistent basis. Um, you know, confidence breeds Trust, trust can breed consistency. Um, you know, having a quality experience will, uh, having a uh, quality strategy will deliver elevated consumer experiences, right? If your clients are raving fans, they're over the top satisfied, um, obviously that makes you feel good, right? Absolutely. And we've all probably have had a transaction where it's been really rough and then you get the paycheck. It's almost feels like blood money. And I don't think that's something that's going to reinforce the process, right? It may pay the mortgage, but it doesn't reinforce the process. What reinforces the process and grows our business is focusing on the experience. Okay. Um, you know, back in the day when I was a lender, Everybody wants to know what the rate was, what's the cost, but what they ultimately remember is what the experience was. They don't remember the cost. So I would say most people don't remember whether they paid you a 6% listing, a 7% listing, or a four and a half, but they will remember if you didn't return phone calls, if you didn't do what you said you were going to do, and if the experience was rough and choppy. Okay. And I see you, Robert Garber, there. Would you agree with me on that? That, you know, they, they can't tell you what whether they paid five or six, but they would remember a good or a bad experience? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and, you know, we see it, you know, all the time when we look back at, uh, we get in touch with our previous clients and they don't necessarily remember all the details of the transaction. They just remember that, yeah, you made it really easy for us. And, and that's what our goal is. It's an experience. It's not necessarily a transaction. 
I also wanted to just mention that I put in the chat, there's a great <laughs> TED talk on overcoming rejection um, that is funny, but uh, you really get the point that, um, you know, rejection, it's, it's not personal. Um, and I would urge any for anyone and everyone to watch the TED talk. It's 15 minutes long and you'll be laughing all the way through, but you'll get the message. Yeah, no, no, nobody grows from their successes. Right. We grow from our challenges. We grow from getting out of the comfort zone. Um, I'm gonna skip down to something that um, I really believe in my core and I, I'm pretty sure Ron and uh, Robert and Marilyn believe this. If you don't call me out on it, but in my personal career, I've never seen anyone do all the right things and come up empty. And this is not to say that everybody can be a door knocker, everybody can be a cold caller. Everybody has a different um, skill set. They have a different, um, everybody's different um, and unique, but there's some formula out there that will provide success. So if you do all the right things to find out what works, including measuring the performance from A, B, C, D, E, and F, you, know, you, you might try door knocking, you might try cold calling, you might try everything, but you might find out that going to the grocery store on Saturday, bagging groceries, carrying them out to the car gives you the ability to build a relationship and list homes. I mean, you just have to keep trying until you figure out what the formula is. Um, I agree with you. That's that's so important. Um, and that's what I keep telling the agents when they come to my classes is that you got to try things <laughs> that work for you. You know, not everything that you know, that I that I teach them is going to work, but whatever they feel comfortable. If you don't like door knocking, cold call. If you don't like cold call, have conversations with your sphere. You talk to your past clients. So, so Ron, we have an agent that did 27 transactions last year by calling, by having 10 conversations a day with people that were in his sphere. And it was to the point where if he didn't, make those 10 conversations he couldn't go to bed at night and 27 that, that's probably more business than most of us have done and he had, he had a script he had a process and he knew that if he had um 10 conversations a day he would have two to three good prospects by the end of the week and he measured he knew the numbers and um i was just very impressed and it was a very very experienced agent with you know strong habits that took this leap of faith and said, I'm going to try that. Um, so coaches measure results and accountability improves results. Those are the last two things I want to talk about, like the coaching mentality. And I want to talk about, um, you know, one of our agents uses a program called Sisu. And I looked up the word for Sisu, where it came from. To me, it's a little bit, you know, uh, I'm like, what the heck is the word Sisu? And Sisu is from the Finnish culture and it's an extraordinary determination in the face of, in the face of extreme adversity and courage that is presented typically in situations where success is difficult. Now, generally speaking in real estate, you know, the odds are not in your favor if you're just a typical uh, agent coming out of real estate school. Would you agree with that, Ron? I mean, the success rate's not very high, is it? No, no. Okay, and in this market, would you agree it might even be at an elevated level of difficulty, right? I would say so, yes. So th this concept of Sisu is that look of sheer determination, knowing that you're going to get it done. It reminds me of like the eye of the tiger, where you, it, despite whatever everybody's telling you, you're going to figure out a way to get it done to help your clients solve the problems and uh, be successful. Um, and I'm just going to read the rest of the definition. Um, it expresses itself in taking action against odds and displaying courage and resoluteness in the face of adversity. In other words, deciding on a course of action and then adhering to it, <clears throat> even if repeated failures ensure, ensue. Because of the decision, the decision is based on the unwavering belief that success will manifest itself. Basically, the opposite of fear. Right. 
And if, if you have fear, when you're making cold calls, Ron, will you be successful? Nope. Rob Durso, if you have fear and you're knocking on the door, will you be successful or will you get eaten alive? You're getting eaten alive, right? Yep. So I, I really appreciate this definition of Sisu, right? It's like, you know the outcome before it happens. And then um, if you're a Tony Robbins fan, there's a word that he has, it's called Kaizen. Does anybody know what that means? Kaizen? Anybody ever heard of the word? But I'm a Tony Robbins fan, though. I've heard a lot of his seminars. You, you, you know, Kaizen doesn't resonate with you, Ron? I've heard it before, but I'm not sure. So Kaizen's a Japanese um, principle where there's no U.S. equivalent. Um, and uh, I, I recall Tony describing it as this mindset of constant and never-ending improvement. And um, it's a compound of two Japanese words called good change and improvement. Kaizen has come to mean continuous improvement through its association with uh, lean method, methodology and principles. Kaizen has its origins in post-World War II Japanese quality circles. Um, and I, I put down it's the opposite of complacency, right? Because when you're complacent, you feel comfortable. And when you're comfortable, that's where the frog gets boiled on the stove. When you're not complacent is when you improve, right? You know, you, you choose to measure yourself against a higher standard. So I think those two, those two principles here are things that we ought to hear. Unfortunately, Ron, you probably have to hear them seven to 10 times before they really take hold. But when you're, when you're operating from um, complacency, you're, you will never, ever, ever grow. And when you're operating from fear, you will not grow. As a matter of fact, you will probably withdraw and exit the business, or you will accept the standard that you have now. And I, I would say most agents probably get a lot of their business from past clients, which means, which is great. That means they do a good job but it also means that they're not getting into the uncomfortable part of their business where they're growing, right? Getting a past client is, Robert, listing a past client who you've helped buy or sell, is that hard or easy? That's easy. Calling an expired um, homeowner that's gotten 27 calls before um, 9 a.m., is that hard or easy? Well, that's certainly harder. Right. And where are you going to grow more? Well, making those calls. Making those calls and figuring out how can you demonstrate how you can add value. And wouldn't it be cool if you could take like three of your past customers to that um, failed listing and say, look, here's, you know, here's some examples of what I did. Yeah, but in, sure. But, but in reality, Robert, we could by using video, right? We could figure out ways to, to get that experience communicated to others and differentiate where we are, but we just lack the imagination and the determination to do it. <laughs> you know, the other thing, Rob, just dealing for a second with prior clients is that there's absolutely nothing wrong with reaching out to them and asking them if they know anyone who might need your help. I mean, that's, that's like shooting fish in a barrel. Um, and uh, that's worked for me over the years very well. So um, if, if you role play that conversation, Robert, you call up, you call me up as a past okay. customer. Would you mind doing that for like uh, 30 seconds? Okay. So, so, hey, Robert, great to hear from you. Well, well, Rob, I've been thinking about you. You know, it's, it's been a little while since we've spoken and... Um, you know, at this point in time, I'm, I'm really looking to build my client base. And I was wondering if you could help me um, by thinking about if there's anyone you know who might be looking to buy or sell property at this point in time. And if you'd be willing to share that information with me or share my information with them, would that be something you'd be open to doing? I mean, you, you know, uh, we uh, 
we're so grateful for what you did for us and we really appreciate it but i'm not sure i know anybody right now well that's okay i mean you know think about it think about if you can come up with two or three names of people who you know you may have overheard them saying something about wanting to make a move or you know that their lifestyle is going to be changing um any of these uh, concepts would be the type of people who would be looking for a really good realtor and you know i certainly could use your help you know what you know one of the members at the, the country club i think he's getting a divorce maybe i'll give you his number that would be wonderful that would be wonderful i really appreciate that and what i think you did a great job at it is if you ask for two or three instead of just saying who do you know i commend you tremendously on that because if you say hey can you give me uh the name of two maybe three people that might be you know looking to make a move in the next 12 to 18 months right and then you also did a good job of pausing waiting for me to answer because sometimes we feel a need to just keep talking but when you have that awkward pause hey Ron, do you, can you think of uh you know, a couple of people that I might be able to help. Maybe the next, if you go out to a year, a year and a half, who, who might be making a move in your in your community? Uh, I'm not sure really right now, but uh, I have your information. I have your card because you call me every three months so and send me uh, information. So if I do think of somebody, I'll give you a call. Very well. But I mean, even even just the way that you engage Robert and, and Ron has a tremendous impact on what the outcome from that call is. Because um, I'm going to go to Mr. Durso, who's Mr. J.J. Ellick. That was quite interesting yesterday, huh? Um, how many times do you think that um, our raving fans, our past customers, know people, but they neglect to refer us? Every time. Every time, right? Every time. Everybody knows somebody. And, and, and those damn past customers, they're, they're rude, right? It's their fault. Yeah, it's all them. I'm perfect. See, Rob, Rob's playing the role. But, I mean, if they're not referring us, it, it, it's, it's, it's on us, folks. It's always on us. You can't change what you tolerate. Yep. Rob, so, just, just take it to the extreme. I have more than a couple of past clients who have referred me more than five <laughs> times to different people. Um, and it's it's because of the constant follow-up with them. And I think also the fact that I make it clear <laughs> to them how much I appreciate their assistance in helping me. You know, I I used to in my earlier days, I would be embarrassed to be too pushy and because I felt like I was being pushy. I, I, I was being too forward to ask. And the more mature you become in the business, the easier it gets. And, and they really, they want to do something great for you. They want to refer you, but you got to ask. And I've just started saying, listen, especially now that I've started something do I, I everybody I talk to they say no oh, you know they want to say oh let me know if I could do anything for you and I go right in I say listen I need referrals I need all the help I can get I'm, I'm starting something new I, I could really use your help oh my goodness yeah and and I'm getting phone calls and they love to be part of somebody's success and, and I think once you get over the hump of Hey, I'm making a difference in people's lives. I'm helping them. I'm, I'm doing things. If they could do it themselves, they wouldn't need us, first of all. But, you know, I'm doing things that make a difference. And once you get beyond that idea of bothering people or being embarrassed, uh, that's when you start to grow in this business. And, and really, it gets to the point where it'll be overwhelming for you. And that's a beautiful feeling. Yeah, past, I think, customers, I, past customers enjoy hearing from you. They actually feel neglected when you don't touch base with them. 
I agree. Uh, they get the same kind of adrenaline rush helping you as you did when you helped them. Yeah. So you know, it's, it's, it's uh, funny because I, I called a uh, past client the other day and he was at work and he was sort of busy. Uh, and I said, hey, uh, John, this is Ron from, from Remax. I just wanted to touch base with you, see how everything is going. It's okay. I'm like, okay, everybody's everybody good. And he goes, yeah, Ron, but I'm really busy right now. I can't talk. He says, no problem. I just just checking in with you, and I just wanted to make sure you have, if you know anyone that's looking to buy, sell, or invest, you know, you'll think of me. He goes, absolutely, Ron, because I get your mail all the time. Now I stay in touch with all my past clients in my sphere every three months. It's it's not it's ongoing. They don't forget me. I just, I just want to throw something out. Just to everybody on this call, I just noticed um, when we started the call, we had just over 100 people on the call, and we're about 40 minutes in, and we're down to like 55. And probably at the very end of this, there may be there may be 50 of us. So 50 percent of us felt that there was something more important to do, and and maybe legitimately, but half of the people on this call had to leave for whatever reason. Now, maybe I'm just overthinking it, but in my mind, this is an important appointment that we make every Friday to be on this call, not to hear ourselves talk, but to walk away with one little item that's gonna make the following week a little bit better. So I think if you look at ourselves as a group, which averages somewhere in the 100 to 110, 20 people, and usually ends about half of them walk away. That's reflective of almost everything we do in a lot of ways. And here we have a group of people who are quote unquote committed to getting better and making themselves better. So I think when you talk about mentoring and what we do for a living and everything else, you have to realize that that old 95.5 is real and that we can't help everybody. And the, those of us that are here are committed and we're here for the duration. As Floyd Wickman used to say, you're here for the duration. So I think each one of us could benefit from a mentor relationship. Um, you know, just look up to your next, what you think your next level is and get in touch with one of the people on this call. There's a lot of great mentors right here and we should take advantage of each other. So, Rob, one of the things that um, really inspires me, and this is a story that I've heard several times, is when a client comes in and says that, you know, uh, such and such agent 17 years ago helped my parents buy a house, and it changed the whole trajectory of our family because we now became homeowners that was the first homeowner that was in our you know immediate family and now all the kids are buying houses and it changed generationally the wealth of our family and there's almost tears when it goes on right absolutely now, i, I, I want to play I, I think this is like a, a little um commercial spot that i've seen on tv i hope i get it right because i didn't preview this but this is where this conversation is going. I'm going to share my screen. And if it's wrong, I'll apologize. But I was kind of like very impressed by the way this personality went about um, explaining what their career was. So give this a second and then imagine yourself. Watch this in the light of you doing this so that your clients can share this with their friends and family. All right. So hang on for a sec. When you're in college, which I did, I, I started as psychology, but got more and more uh, analytical and ended up in, in molecular biology. And I thought I might want to be a doctor, but didn't really have the grades because uh, I had fun. I was able to. Can you guys hear it a little bit or no? Yeah. To, to go to grad school at MIT in molecular biology, but 
my second year there, I invested a little money for my father and started reading the Wall Street Journal, and I got bitten by the bug. I got my master's and, and eventually ended up at Merrill Lynch in their training program. I can remember being in the boardroom of, of Merrill Lynch, or I, I, I subsequently worked for E.F. Hutton. We all wished we could just follow the markets and talk and recommend to each other uh, what's going on and interpret what's happening and not have to constantly be selling. That's essentially one of the things I do now. I'm able to, to make a living, pay the bills, and do what I like, and do what I enjoy. Viewers are from all walks of life, and I'm talking from the, the most well-known CEO down to just someone that I see uh, at, at the gym where you know, where I work out. They'll talk about something that I said last week or that we talked about last month or today and it might have helped them with an investment, help them uh, avoid uh, making a mistake in an investment or just something that they thought was really funny or, or interesting or entertaining. That, I think CMEC is incredibly uh, important and useful, whether it's the Federal Reserve, whether it's uh, initiatives in Washington or legislation or, or just being able to, to find a company that, that you think is going to do well, find out how to invest in it so you can go along for the ride with this successful company. A lot of people say we cover the entire spectrum, find it very rarely uh, in media nowadays. It's hard to really separate um, who I am from, from CNBC. It's almost been half my life uh, that I've been here, so uh, it, it runs pretty deep. That, that's that's not the one I was looking at, but it was pretty close. He talked about his passion for helping out people with financial literacy and, and how that was part of his goal. Like every one of us can can do a, a short video on our iPhone and talk about somebody that, you know, we probably changed the trajectory of their family by helping them out and buying a house. And now the kids have bought houses or we've been in business long enough, you know, um, we don't realize what an impact we we might have had or that we did have, right? Ron, what do you think about like having like a, a one minute clip talking about like, we don't just, you know, sit open houses and open doors, right? We change lives. We educate people if it's the right choice for them. Public doesn't know that. Yeah, we took, we talked about that yesterday <laughs> in my class about YouTube videos and um, you know putting posting on reels and uh, giving information that will help your clients and help the public. That's how you get you know you gain trust. And, and I think um, on that um, uh, peer to peer to peer, I think I might have played one of Glenn Baker's team members' videos <laughs> where they where they talked about. Hey, you know, I spent my, I grew up in Parsippany. I was a teacher. Like it really humanizes people. Right. And I love what I do. I'd love to help you, you know, buy, you know, buy your first house, whatever I can do. If I can help you out, let me know. Right. It, it, it's just so powerful in my opinion. And so few people are doing it. And of course it's because it's uncomfortable. And if you watch your own video, who's going to be the most critical of it? You will, right? So um, anyway, we're almost to the end. Any Anybody have any questions, comments? I just want to add something, uh, Rob. You know, from everything, all the comments and, and have been great and, and, and the newer agents should, should listen to and take advice from all these uh, experienced people on the call. But everything to me from what I hear and, and what I've seen throughout the years is that we're our own worst enemy <laughs> and everything that we're, we're talking about today. I love what Rob Dursa uh, said. Um, I believe a lot in what he said as well. And um, nice to meet you, Rob. Um, but all of this is because we're our own worst enemy, you know, um, not in the same way, but everybody's their own worst enemy in different ways. So we just got to look at that and and and, and uh, overcome those fears. You got to want it. Or those thoughts, you know, like, you know, we were talking about, um, you know, some of us might just look at ourselves as a salesperson. We're not just a salesperson, you know, and 
by you thinking that in your mind, oh, I'm a salesperson, you know, that's the way you're going to approach everything. And that's not the way we work. You know, we're not salespeople. I appreciate you sharing that, Paul. Thank you. So um, that's, that's why I mentioned for a coach, because if you meet somebody that you will actually talk to, like, for example, my spot, if Rob Lazar says, hey, Rob, this is what I'm, I'm seeing in you, and I think we can help you get to the next level, I'm going to listen. And that's where having someone that you can talk to and that you will listen to makes the difference. Because otherwise, what's wrong with me? What do you want me to change for? I'm, I'm great. So I, that's the biggest value in a mentor for me. So I appreciate you, Rob. Hey, I, I think it's, the, it's a mutual um, beneficial relationship because I feel like I'm getting more from you. So there we have it. That's, that's it. That's a beautiful thing. So, so don't get tired of hearing it again and again. Don't turn off halfway through because you think you've heard it before. Because unless you're actually embracing it and doing it, um, it really hasn't impacted you. And I'm going to close this meeting by saying that we talk about how hard the business is. We talk about like um, Sisu looking into it and saying it's difficult. We're still going to get it done. But the real reality to it is if you just have a servant's heart and figure out how can you help people and you have the initiative to block time and do what you know you're going to do, you can be really, really, really successful. And I would bet you that this individual that's making that's not making 10 calls, having 10 conversations a day is probably doing that in less than an hour. He's probably having those calls. Maybe it's an hour and a half but he's doing 27 transactions, okay? And, and I'll bet you the average transactions worth eight grand, so that's well over $200,000 for, let's call it seven or eight hours a week worth of conversations. And if you can enjoy those conversations, it's not even like working, right? You can work a hell of a lot less, Rob Durso, if you enjoy what you're doing, because then you never work, right? That's right. So, you know, I, I can, I can uh, go for a walk to be healthy or I can walk around and knock on doors, talk to great people, feel good about it and say, wow, this is actually work. Think of how great that is. So um, I leave you with that. Um, you know, there's no magic bullet. It's not super hard. It's about caring, consistency, um, leaning into your peers and and doing something and and not being complacent about it, always trying to figure out how can you get a little bit better. Sometimes you get better faster by, you know, sharing ideas with others or doing something with somebody else. Um, is there anyone on, on this call that learned because they started their career and they were in an office, maybe in a bullpen area and you heard the top producers making calls and you saw how they did it? Anybody like that? Me. <laughs> right? I mean, and, and to some extent, Colleen, that's not as available as it used to be, right? No. No. But that's in, it's incredibly it's incredibly powerful when you have that experience. And we're trying to deliver that to you, give you that confidence, and let's let's have fun first and make money second. But we need, to, we, need to, we need to block it out. So anyway, I wish everybody uh, a happy, a good weekend. And hopefully everybody in uh, Southeast Florida is doing okay with that, that uh, flooding that's yeah, going on there. We're hanging in there. Uh, just one more thing. Uh, everybody, remember, we're here to support and help you. Please make use of uh, Ron Piccolo. Uh, he is really an expert at what he does. And he really loves helping you. Yep, we had uh, Maria and Marilyn. We have a lot of our leadership team on here. So uh, everybody have a great weekend, productive weekend. Have fun and, and take care of your clients and make money. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. Later, you. Rob. Thanks. Bye. You're Thanks welcome. so much.